everybody, this is Michelle, and I'm here today to start working on my Home Again folio. And this is a design team project that I am doing for Country Craft Creations. And I was gifted this wonderful set of papers by Cartabella called Home Again. And uh, this is available at Country Craft Creations. And I'm, I'm just really excited to start working with this. It's a really pretty collection. I love the colors. Really fresh and really, really inviting. Um, it's a home theme. I can see that it could be used for all kinds of uh, nice home-centered photo albums. Um, also has some recipe elements, so I think it would make an awesome recipe album as well. But it's really, really super cute, and I'm really excited to get to use it. So um, we're gonna get started today. I've created a folio design that we're going to work on and start putting together. So again, um, the Home Again collection by Cartabella, and then I'm also using the brown artisan card stock that, um, is sold at Country Craft Creations and it's amazing card stock to work with. So let's get started on this folio. It's really um, kind of an interesting folio. Um, when I was drawing up the plans for it, it's it's basically it's going to have um, a mirrored side. So the left side and the right side will mirror, but they all will have different elements within the mirrors, I should say. So I just wanted to show you just real quick a visual of what it's going to look like. So you're going to see in the cutting guide that I will have a link to um, on my blog that I have kind of um, designated each piece as a letter. So if you look at the inside of the folio when it is opened up, you're going to have the spine in the middle. And then I'm basically labeling the pieces as A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so you're going to hear me talking about like the inside of A, the inside of B, you know, the front side of E versus the back side, which would be behind there. Um, so I just wanted to give you a visual. Of that's kind of how I'm going to be referring to the different elements um, on the outside. Then if you were to look at it all opened up from the outside, then A, of course, would be starting over here, A, B, C, D. The back side of B, the outside of B, will be the front cover, and then C will be the back cover, and then again the spine in the middle. These little stars will represent some magnets that we're going to put in. So I just kind of wanted you to see that, to kind of um, visualize that in your head as we go. Um, it helps me. I'm a pretty visual person, so when I you know, do stuff like this, um, I tend to draw out lots and lots of plans and sketches and things. So let's get started with the base folio, and then we're going to add our elements um, as we go. And um, please excuse the Mickey Mouse Band-Aid. I, of all things, stabbed myself with one of my hair tie clasp things and <laughs> got a pretty good owie. And the only Band-Aid I have is my granddaughter's Mickey Mouse Band-Aid. So I borrowed one. So Casey, I hope you don't mind. All right, so let's get started. So we're gonna need a few pieces. There's gonna be six basic pieces that will create the folio. So you're going to need two pieces that will measure nine by eight. This will be folio A and folio D. And they both measure nine by eight. And you're going to score on the eight inch side at one half and then at one and a quarter. Okay, so again, two of these, nine by eight, and you're going to score on the eight inch side here at one half and one and a quarter. We'll set those aside. Then you will need two pieces that will be B and C, and this will actually create the outside covers of the folio. And these are nine by eight and a half, and you're going to score on the eight and a half side at one and a half inches. And this piece here, this half inch, is gonna create the spine. We're going to adhere those together, and that's gonna create a nice sturdy spine. And um, once you get all your pattern papers on here, it's gonna be a very sturdy project. I am not using chipboard in this project at all. And then um, you're gonna need two pieces that are going to be the inner folios E and F. So when I showed you that picture, these are gonna be the inside um, leaves that will open up and those will measure nine by seven and three quarters both of them and you're going to score on the seven and three quarters um, side at a half and one inch all right so let's start with the outer covers and 
we're going to go ahead and I've already scored them where they're supposed to be. So again, they're scored at one and a half inches. So we're going to have a one and a half inch spine. And then if I can find what I did in my bone folder here, I'm going to fold and burnish both of these. And then we're going to simply just adhere them to each other like that. So I'm going to grab my glue and going to do that. I also was given um, quite a bit of seam binding, some beautiful colors that match this. And I would show it to you, except that um, I went ahead and, you know, wet it and scrunched it. And now it's drying and I didn't want to get my papers wet. So I'm just going to put this on a straight edge here, line them up, and then fold that over. And there you have it. So that's going to create our spine. I'm just going to make sure that I have a really good stick and I'm going to find my little gauze pad here and there we go. And then we're going to cover the spine with pattern paper later. So get some glue off of that. Okay, so this piece is done. All right, so this was A and C. So what we put together right now, or excuse me, B and C, were these two pieces right here, B and C, and they connected at the spine. Okay, so now we're going to add the two outside pieces, A and D. So I'm going to get this out of the way for just a second. These are going to have a nice gusset. So we're going to, I've already, whoop, I'm going to throw that over there. So I've already scored again. These are nine by eight and I've already scored at half an inch and one and a quarter inch. We're just going to fold and burnish and then we're going to add those to the outer edges. Okay, so there's one. It's going to have a three-quarter inch gusset on here, which will be nice. Give you lots of room to add your pictures. If you decide to use this as a recipe folio, um, totally would hold a lot of recipes too. So, All right, so we have our fold and burnish. So we're just going to take that half-inch tab and adhere it to each side so that it will open like that. All right. So we do want to miter our corners on the half inch. Leave the three quarter inch gusset because you're going to want that. So don't cut into that part. All right. And then we'll grab our glue. And then I'm going to carefully, if I can get a hold of it, fold that edge. And then I'm going to adhere that right to the edge of the cover that we just made. Make sure I got that pretty good. Okay. So now you'll have a piece that looks like that. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Right our corners. Let's do that first. This is a really fun project to make. I really, really had a good time with this. Um, I'm going to have a magnet closure that will help keep this book closed. Oops. Don't want to get glue on here. But I'm also going to use some of the seam binding um, to do this as well. To do a, a pretty tie. It won't really, 
I mean, it'll help close it, but the magnets will be doing most of the work. But the tie will look really pretty. So we'll have a little bit of both for the closure here. All right. So now we should have that. Make sure that everything gets stuck down really well. All right. All right. Okay. So now we have a piece that's looking like this. All right, so you can see the front cover, spine, back cover. And then when it opens up, you will have this, and then you will have flaps that open up like this. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're gonna put the inner pieces on, and the inner pieces are going to line up against these spine pieces here. And they're gonna have a little bit of a gusset as well. They're gonna have a half inch gusset, so everything will have a little bit of a space to add things. So again, we're going to add E and F to this. And these both are, again, nine by seven and three quarters. And we're going to score at half an inch and at one inch. So let me get this out of the way. And we're going to fold and burnish and miter our corners again. There we go. There's one. We're going to have some really awesome um, elements in here. I'm planning on using my little um, tag closure that I've showed you in previous projects. And there's going to be a couple pop-up features that I was playing with. And I, I had actually kind of designed this album a couple months ago, and I was kind of waiting for the right papers to come along um, to use the design for. So I think this is going to work out just perfect for this design. So I'm going to miter those corners too, and then I'm going to grab the book. We're going to open it up all the way. So this is your inside spine here. So these are going to attach on either side like that okay so they're going to open up like that so we're going to grab the glue and put the glue on it's a pretty simple construction for this it's the elements that in that are um, going to go on the inside that make it really really fun and really interactive all right, so I'm just going to line that up, not on the score line, but just right to the edge of the score line. So you don't want this interfering with the fold. Line that up. And burnish that down. Okay. And then we're going to do the other side. Get our glue. Okay. I'm using art glitter glue that you can get from Country Craft Creations and it's awesome. Um, the only trouble with it is that you can't ship it during the winter time. It gets a little tricky because it messes with the formula and then it doesn't work. So um, it, you can use other types of glue that you have available. Um, score tape would also work really well in this particular project. And so either way, whatever you wanna use. Okay, so now we have our inside pages and then they will fold over like that and then everything will fold over like that. And then you will have your folio um, should look like that. Those are the um, base pages. All right, so again, when you sh I showed you the diagram, A, B, C, D, and then the two middle ones are E and F. 
okay? So that's the basic construction of the folio. And now we're going to start adding some fun things to it. So um, the first thing we're going to do is on the inside of A and on the inside of um, D here, we're going to put belly bands on. And they're real simple, um, but they are really, really cute and fun to make. You're going to need two of these. So they are one and a half inches by seven and three quarters. And you're going to score at half an inch on each of the short ends. All right, pretty, pretty basic belly band um, feature here. And so we're going to, uh, you don't need to miter the corners because we're going to um, fold the tabs and, whoops, stick them onto the page. And then the pattern paper can slide underneath it. So you don't really need to miter the corners on these. Um, you can if you want, but you don't have to. The pattern paper is going to cover that. So these are pretty simple. And then the cool thing is um, this sticker sheet that I showed you. So one of these stickers for each of these pages is going to end up being a stopper. And I haven't decided which ones yet, but I'm going to take and put one of these stickers on a piece of cardstock. I'm not sure which one. And then we're going to glue that to the bottom of the page so when the tags go in under the belly band, the stopper will stop them from sliding all the way through. So that is um, a real fun way to use your sticker sheets. You could also use um, die cut elements, um, which I have a whole bunch of those too that I was given with the kit. Can you see these? Are they cute? So I might use one of those too. I just haven't decided. The other thing that I got were these awesome um, metal corners. So I'm, um, I have some ideas on how I'm going to incorporate those as well. Okay. So belly band, I folded the half inch tabs over and then we're basically going to just glue them right to the middle. And I'm going to get my centering ruler here and my glue. And sometimes it's easy to easier to just glue one tab at a time and get it set and then put the other tab down. And so that's what I'm going to do. So let's see, let's center this. So it's nine inches, the pages are nine inches. So I'm gonna center it at about four and a half on each side using my centering ruler. And then that goes about there. I'm just gonna pop that down. And then this guy will go down right there. All right, so that's pretty simple, belly band. All right, there you go. And you also wanna make sure that it's not going to interfere with the, um, the seam, which this one isn't, but just double check before you stick it down. And then we're going to put one on the other side, right here. The same process. So, center that there. Put your glue on here. And I'm going to stick it down right about there. All right, then grab the glue. There we go. Today is also my laundry day, so if you hear my washer and dryer go off, that's what's going on. Okay, there we go. So we have our belly bands down, and then once we add our pattern paper, underneath the belly band, you know, all the way down to the bottom, then we can pick our element and then I'm going to adhere it to the bottom. And if you want a lot of room for photos and things, um, use foam tape to adhere it because that'll lift that um, element up so you can fit a lot of things underneath it. If you're only going to have a couple pieces, then you could totally just glue it and that would be fine, but it'd be totally enough to, to stop 
whatever you're putting in here from falling through the bottom and it also gives a really nice decorative piece as well all right so we've got our two belly bands on the outer pages so then um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to let's work on page B so we'll kind of keep in order here so page B is going to be a flat page let me get the um, pieces for that so there's going to be a couple things there's going to be flaps and then we're going to put an element on the inside so we're going to start with the flaps and the um, the pieces you are going to need are you're going to need two flaps that are six and a half by five and we're going to need again two of them and on the five inch side we're going to score at three eighths and at one half it's going to give us an eighth inch gusset and these are going to go on the kind of the outside and then you're going to have two inner flaps that are four and a half by seven two of these and you're going to score on the seven inch side at one half an inch okay so let's fold and burnish and put this away for a second and then we'll stick those elements on um, okay so we need two that are four and a half by seven and once we this one will not have a gusset and you will have plenty of room this will be four and a half by six and a half and plenty of room for four by six pictures and the same with this so six and a half by five we scored at three eighths and at one half again and I'm gonna have all of these um, you know pieces listed down below and then I will have a, a visual cut file um, on my blog and I will leave a link to that so that you can um, see how to cut your cardstock um, I do not do that for the pattern paper um, because you know everybody does something different you might want to you know incorporate a whole bunch of scraps and things like that but um, I will, as I paper this, try and see just how much I used so that I can let you know. Um, oh, these half inch scores sometimes are a bear, but they're well worth it to get that eighth inch gusset that you need. Why can't I get that today? So I'm going to do a trick here. I'm going to hold that ruler there. Do it that way. See if that works. Ah, yes, that worked. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have these flaps. So the ones with the gusset are going to be on the outside, and the ones without the gusset are going to be on the inside. Now you're going to you're going to see what I mean here in just a second. So let's get all that out of the way. Let's grab our book. And we're working on page B. I'll grab our inside gussets first, and we're gonna put one up here, and we're gonna put one down here, okay? So we are gonna miter the corners that are, um, because the pattern paper, you know, won't go all the way to the corners, and we're gonna put these right to the edge. So we're gonna miter these corners, and we might as well just do them for all of them, and then we'll just have it done put the glue on and go all right so keep your eighth inch gusset don't cut into that just cut a miter in the three eighths inch spot okay get rid of those all right and we'll grab our glue And you're going to need three magnets for this project and this is one page where we will need it so excuse my head for just a second I know I'm gonna get in the shot so line it up all the way at the top of the page but make sure that you're right on the other side of that score line don't be in the score line okay So there's that one, and then we're going to do the other one on the bottom. Okay. 
Okay. Like so. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take the gusseted pieces that we made and we're going to make sure that fold is good. Okay. Put glue on the 3 8 inch tab. And the first one is going to go right here and line that up at the top and actually make sure this guy is closed so you can get it right to the edge of the top of the project. And that will just glue right on top of the tab that we use to add this page to the book. Okay, just like that. Then we'll have to open this one up to put this other one on because this one is gonna go down in this corner here. So we're kind of have gonna have a four cornered kind of flappy do here. All right. So again, I'm going right to the edge of the score, but not in it. And I'm lining it up with the bottom of the page. And I'm gonna stick that down that way just a wee bit like that. Okay, so when you open it, you're going to have a four corner kind of um, closure or uh, element here. This will fold down, that will fold down, this folds in, and that folds in. When you put the pattern paper on this, it's going to be super cute. You're going to have pattern paper that will show in these two corners and then these two up here. And we're going to use a magnet right here to close it. So let me grab my magnet set here. And we're going to go ahead and just attach that so it's there. Now, underneath this, we're going to have another amazing little element. So let's work on that next. So I'm just going to put that down, my magnet where I want it. And then make sure that your gussets, you're not folding your gussets over. Make sure that they're straight up. so that looks good okay and then there you go now you have a magnet closure that will hold everything all in place and then we'll cover these with pattern paper and it's gonna look lovely okay so underneath all of this now that we've made it we're gonna create an element that's gonna go under here and this one's gonna be kind of fun um, let me put this aside for just a second and grab the other pieces. So what we're going to do is a pop-up book element. And we're going to need a couple of things with this. We're going to need basically just three pieces of paper. So we're going to have a little mini, I'm calling it a little um, inner book. It's four and a quarter by six and a half. And you're going to score it down the middle on the sixth and a half at three and a quarters. Okay. So, and then when you do that, just fold it over and burnish. And then we'll set this guy aside. Okay. Then we're going to need a seven, seven tall by 10 inch piece. And this is, I'm calling the outer book. And we're going to score down the middle at five. So seven by 10 and score down the middle on the 10 inch side at five. And that's just going to make basically a five by seven card. Okay. And then here's the, here's the mechanism for it. So the mechanism you're going to cut at three by six, and then we're going to stick it in our scoreboard and you're going to score it at one half one and a half and two and a half okay one and a half one and a half two and a half on the three inch side so this is three by six again and then what we're going to do is we're going to put it in our cutter and we're going to cut this into six one inch strips okay so let me do that super quick it's easier if you're going to um 
do this to score it once instead of cutting the strips and then scoring it six times. So if you score it all at once and then cut the strips, you're going to be a lot happier. It'll be a lot easier and a lot faster. So let me grab my strips. I just cut those strips. So you have six of those. Let me see. Can you get them all? So this is what I'm saying, what I mean when I say score it first and then cut it in the strips. And then you don't have to, if you cut all these in one inch strips, then you have to score each one individually. Score it first, then cut it, boom, you're done. Okay, so then these little pieces, we're gonna fold all of them mountain style. All right, all of them fold at mountain. It's a little um, fiddly, but this is a really, really cute element to put in your book. All right, so once we have those folded, then what we're going to do is we're gonna grab the seven by 10 piece that we scored in half, okay? Make sure that's folded really well. All right, so then we're gonna open up our book and um, you know what? I, what am I gonna do here? What am I going to do here? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna make this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna piece, I think what I'm gonna do, yeah, I'll show you in a minute. So this is gonna be cute. This is gonna be really, really cute. Okay, so you're gonna need your ruler, and you're going to need your pencil, and we are going to do some marking, and let me double check my measurement here, because I don't wanna mess y'all up. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna measure up two inches from the bottom, right like that, and then two inches from the top. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna just draw a little line Just a little one, not you don't need a whole lot and we just need some markings here. There we go. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adhere some things within that space, okay? So grab one of these guys here and um we're gonna take this one here, the first one, put glue on your tab and then after you throw it, <laughs> you're going to want to take take it and, boy, I can't, can't do this. Okay, so you're going to want to put it right above that two-inch line that we drew and glue it down with the edge of it facing the inside of the fold. But don't get in the fold, just put it right at the edge of the fold, okay? So it'll fold over just like this. All right, then take another one and do the same thing at the top. I'm gonna to turn it around so I can see. Okay, just like that, okay? Then we're gonna fold those over. We're gonna grab a couple more and we're gonna take this guy here And we're gonna glue that. Okay, so you see this first square here? We're gonna glue the edge of this, the fold, right to the score line of that guy. So we're gluing it right on top of that piece that we just put down, like that. Okay? Okay. Yep, yeah, I'm doing it right. Okay. <laughs> I had to check it for a second. Okay. So we just we just glued that tab to the first square right to the edge. So we're going to do that again. All 
after it. Just like that. So now we have this kind of wonky little piece that looks like this. We've just glued to the top. Okay, then we're gonna fold this over like that. Fold it in half, that piece that we just did. We're gonna apply glue to here and to here. And then we're gonna hold this down and we're gonna close our book. And as we're gonna close our book, it's gonna slide the mechanism, let it slide. We're just trying to keep those tabs down. And then we're gonna glue that down. Okay. So when you open it, you should have something that will look like this now. All right, top view. All right. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to glue these guys down and we're gonna kind of repeat the process. All right, so this tab, this is the first tab that we did and it's partner over here went on this side, the left side of the score. We're gonna glue this guy down to the right side of the score. And this is a little fiddly, but all you have to do is just kind of fold it down. Stick it down. There's plenty of room to stick your finger down there and then you can also fold it and make sure that it gets stuck really well. And that is all flat, okay? So when you do that, you'll end up with a what looks like a triangle piece and a square piece. I hope you can see that. Okay, so then we're gonna do the same thing. Gonna line that up and fold it over. right on the other side of the score. And then we'll go ahead and close our book and make sure that it's nice and flat and stuck down really well. Okay, so again, we're gonna have a piece that looks like a square and a piece that looks like a triangle there. And then we're gonna take our last two pieces and we're going to adhere them to the other side just like we did before. So this one will go right here on that side. Okay, so it adheres right to the top of that triangle. The second one will go right there. And again, you can close your book and make sure that everything lays flat and you can kind of press it down, and make sure that you get a good stick with your glue. All right. And then we're going to fold it in half. We're gonna put glue on the little half inch tabs here. And then we're going to just fold our book and then glue it down. All right. So then you will have a mechanism that will look like this. When you open this up, these squares will actually be flat and they will be raised. So then what you can do now is grab the little inner book that you had. We're gonna put glue on these squares. And then we're gonna take our book and we're gonna center it right in the middle. However, it's easier for you to see it. I'm gonna eyeball it, but we're gonna center it right in the middle of that. And then holding it in that center so that it doesn't slip out, slowly close your book and then we'll adhere that down. So now when you open up your book, you have a raised pop-up page, okay? 
Pretty cool, huh? That's pretty cool. And it's pretty sturdy, too. And once you get your pattern paper on here and everything, it's going to be super cool. So I think what I'm going to do, I decided I'm going to use um, scraps, and I'm going to piece scraps of paper around the outside edges, and that's going to look really, really cool. All right, so let's, let's put it in our book. This is going to go underneath all those flaps that we just created. So going to open up our book to B. We're going to open up our flaps here. That's the magnet closure. Here's that flap. This guy here is going to go right in here. And actually, we're not going to adhere it because we're going to put pattern paper on here first. Pattern paper first, then put this on. So, but just to get a visual of where this is going to be, it's going to open up just like that. And then this little cool surprise will be underneath all of this fun right there okay so so far we've done page a with the belly band and we're going to do the stopper um, i'm going to do the stopper after i put the pattern paper on and then we have our flat page here with our little pop-up book so this has a magnet closure and it will open like that and like that into a nice kind of four area place where you could put lots and lots of pictures and then you're going to have this element on after you put your pattern paper down we're going to add that and then we're going to open it like that and then i'm going to put strips of pattern paper i'm going to kind of patchwork this and create a really cool border and then have this that's what i'm going to do so um that's that particular element and that goes in here all right, so next, let's look at, if we go in order, so we're gonna skip this page for now, this is E. We're gonna just go over here and we're going to go to page C. Okay, trying to go in order here. So page C, again in our diagram, is the inside of the back cover of our book. And what we're going to do is we're going to do another pop-up element here. And again, we're going to have to put pattern paper on here first before we adhere it down. But we're going to make the element that's going to go here. So let's get the pieces for that. This is a fun thing. I'm sure you guys have seen this before, the pop and twist. Um, I kind of resized it for a 5x7 um, card opening. So we're going to need a couple different things. We're going to need um, a five by seven piece of paper and no scoring on this one, just plain five by seven. We're gonna need a five by seven and a half and on the seven and a half inch side, we're gonna score at a half and then we're going to you know, fold and burnish this. And then real quick, let's just finish this. Where'd my scissors? Oh, right in front of my face, okay. So we're going to do that, miter the corner, and we are going to glue that to that, okay? Okay, so just line that up and basically what we've done is we've created a five by seven horizontal open or a vertical opening card. Okay. Alright. So we can set that aside for just a second. And then we're going to this is gonna be the actual when we pop the pop card. It's going to um, need a, um, the actual card, I guess you could say. So we're going to need a piece that's four and a half by 12, and we're going to score it at three, six, and nine. So four and a half by, or four and a half, excuse me, tall by 12, and we're going to score at three, six, and nine. And then, because this is going to drive me nuts, some, I have a really cool trimmer, but sometimes if I don't, if I don't operate it just right, I get edges that don't quite look right, and that's gonna bug me. Okay, so I fixed it. Okay, so 
when this opens, um, we're going to need it to, we're going to fold it. It's going to kind of pop out at you. It's the coolest thing. If you haven't seen this, this is really neat. So basically, we're just going to fold this up kind of accordion style. And when it opens, it's going to open up like this. Okay? So we're going to put that aside. Because now we need to make the element that's going to make it pop. So this one is kind of fun um, to do. So this piece here, you're going to need a piece that's four and a half by 11. Okay, four and a half by 11. This is the mechanism for this, for page C. And you're gonna make some uh, pencil marks. And if I can find my pencil, um, I put mine in the scoreboard and you're gonna wanna make a little tick at three and a quarter. And you're gonna wanna make a tick at seven and three quarter. And then you're going to turn it around and you're going to do it again. Three and a quarter and seven and three quarters. So you're going to end up having little tick marks on the four corners. And then what I do is, and this is the reason why I have the red line drawn down my, my um, scoreboard, is you're going to match the tick marks in opposite corners. And then once you get it lined up, then you're going to make a score. And then you're going to turn it. You're gonna match your score or your tick marks and you're gonna score. So you'll have an X in the middle of your piece now. And then we're gonna flip this over and we're going to, excuse me, on the four and a half inch uh, side, we're gonna score at two and a quarter. We're gonna score it on the opposite side, okay? So then we're gonna get rid of our scoreboard and we're going to make our folds and we're gonna fold in the direction our scores are supposed to do. So we're gonna do that. And then we're going to fold the X score lines in the opposite direction, like that, okay? And then once you have that, then what we're gonna do is <laughs> we're gonna fold it like that and it's going to naturally kind of go into this shape here okay so when you fold it down this center point it will kind of naturally fold the way you want it to go we're going to lay it down and then we're going to make sure everything's burnished really well okay all right just like that, just like that. Okay, then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our card, our big card here, and we're going to glue the triangles to the inside of this card. Now, the first thing we're gonna need to do, actually, is put some pattern paper down. Um, so hang on just a second, because it's gonna be easier to do that than, yeah. So let me find some pattern paper here and I will be right back. Let me, let me see. I think, yes, I think I will use this. So let me make some cuts here real quick. So this is five by seven. So I'm going to cut it an eighth of an inch shorter. So I'm going to cut four and an eighth by six and seven eighths. And seven eighths. Four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. Four and seven eighths, six and seven eighths. Okay. All right. So that's going to be the inside of my card. So let's go ahead and do I, oh, do I want the polka dots or do I want the stripes? I don't want the polka dots. All right. This paper was also given to me. Um, in the design team package and this is the authentic spectrum paper and it's super pretty so I got a couple sheets of that that I'm going to use you know in this project too let's see right I'm gonna center that push that down in the um, 
prototype that I, I was working on figuring this design out and everything, I put it down before I, um, I put the mechanism in before I put it with pattern paper. So that was kind of fun trying to figure out how I was going to cover that up and figure that out. But Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we have our card. All right. And it's covered on the inside. And now we can put the mechanism on. So these triangles are going to be glued right in the middle and they're going to be glued right to the score line, not in the score line, but right to the edge of the score line. So we're gonna wanna get it kind of as straight as possible. Make sure it's burnished really well. Okay, and we'll put our glue down. right to the score line, right in the middle. And then we'll put glue on this triangle. And then we'll close our card and glue that down. So then when you open this, it's going to open like that, okay? And it'll actually open all the way flat, okay? So then, and it closes like that, okay? So then we're going to take, there's no need to cover the mechanism with pattern paper. I mean, if you really want to, you can, but I don't. Then we're going to take this guy and we're going to lay this right on top. Now, this guy is the same, I just turned it over so I could show you, it's the same um, width, or height I should say, okay, but it's not, it's a little bit longer than um, the mechanism, and that's, that's okay, all right? You just have to be aware that when you lay this down, and you probably, it'd be easier, it's easier for me if I just turn it over and do it this way because then I can see that I've got it centered um, pretty good. So you're gonna wanna uh, glue in two spots. You're gonna glue up here and you're gonna glue down here. You're gonna leave these unglued because if you glue them, the mechanism is not going to work, okay? So we're gonna glue again this corner and this corner so when we turn it over it'll basically you know it'll be here and here okay so we're going to kind of line it up and it's about a half an inch on either side okay and then remember you don't want to glue past the score line either so you're going to want to do a, a chunk you know right in here all right so Okay, and then some glue right here. Opposite. And we're gonna turn this over and we're gonna set it down. About a half an inch on each side. All right. There we go. Oop. I didn't let it sit long enough. All right. So then, I'm going to very carefully
<laughs> very carefully. Why isn't this working? Um, oh, you know why it's not working? Because I fold, I put it on the wrong way. <laughs> All right. So the mountain has to go up here and this has to be a valley. That's why. All right, let's do that. There we go. That has to go like that. Okay, so kids, note to self. You're gonna wanna make sure that when you do this, you're gonna want valley, mountain, valley. And then when you fold this, this will twist and turn and it's hard because I put it on backwards but we're gonna fix that. So I'm gonna tease that in there. I'm gonna do that. And then, see, I'm good at teaching y'all what not to do. So that's what happens when you don't do it the way you're supposed to do it. I should have remembered that part, but I didn't. So there you go. So I'm gonna just go in here and kind of try and reburnish that one fold. All right, so now that we've got that part figured out, then when you open it, it will do that, okay? So that's our pop and twist. When you close it, you may have to kind of help nudge it a little bit, but the effect is really, really, really cool. When you get the patterned papers on there and everything, it's really, really, really cool. All right, so I'm going to just try and burnish that a little bit. It's gonna be kind of hard since I did it backwards, but yeah. So note to self, guys, make sure that it's valley, mountain, valley, when you do that, okay? That will fold much easier. Okay, so now that we've got that, then we'll grab our book. And this guy, once we add our pattern paper, will go here. So, and then we're also going to put a ribbon over here to um, close it. You know what, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let me pick a pattern paper for this and I will be right back. Um, let's see, this is going to be, this is seven by nine. The page, this page is seven by nine. They're not all seven by nine. So you have to make sure you are aware of that um, when you do it. So let's pick, let's see here. Which one do I want? Ah, let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to cut it at six and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. I think that will look pretty. I like that or that. Ooh, I like that better. Okay, here we go. All right. Here we go. I'm going to put this down. Oh, you know what? I can't do the ribbon because like I told you, my seam binding is wet. <laughs> okay, well, you're going to... Boy. There we go. All right. Make sure that's stuck really well. Isn't this paper just dreamy? Don't you love it? So pretty. So pretty. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to glue this bad boy down. No, we're not because I need my ribbon. Okay. So you're going to get a visual. I will show this when the video is all done. You guys are going to see what this is going to look like. <laughs> all right. So there's our pop and twist. So this is going to go down. I'm going to put ribbon around here to close it, close it, or excuse me, seam binding. And then when we open it up, it's going to have a really nice pop-up effect. All right. There we go. So that part's done. Okay. So we already did D. So... The next thing we're going to want to do is let's go ahead and we're going to close that up. All right, so we got 
let's go through this again. A, we've got a belly band. And on B, we've got our flaps with our book. And again, we were going to put some pattern paper there. And then we're going to put that down. And then all that will be held by that. And you know what? I guess we could. No, we can't. Anyway, I'll show you that later. So that's that. That's B. All right. And then we did C is here with our pop and twist. And then D is our uh, other belly band, the opposite side. Okay, so now let's work on this part here, E. Okay, so on the front side here, it's gonna be really simple. Um, where is my stuff here? Um, there's pockets on the front side of E and F. And we could just go ahead and do these um, right now. So on E, we're gonna put a horizontal pocket. And on F, we're going to do a vertical pocket. And let me find it. Okay. So we'll get those done. Okay. So the horizontal pocket that we're going to put on the front of E, which is this flap here, is four by seven and three quarters. And we're going to score it at a half an inch on each side. And these are just simple, simple pockets. Um, but they create a lot of space so that you have plenty of places to put pictures and whatnot. So we're going to burnish that and we're going to miter corners. Okay, and then we're going to grab our glue and we're going to put glue. I'm going to start with one tab. And then what I'm going to do, hopefully not get glue on everything else, is I'm going to match that to the edge and the bottom and stick it down like that. And then this is gonna fold over. It's gonna glue on the other side. And we're just gonna put a row of glue on the bottom and on the tab, and then that'll create a nice pocket. There we go. Okay, so that takes care of that, so that pocket. And so then the vertical pocket we're going to do on this side, and it's basically just the same thing, and we're just going to miter the corners and do the same number, except for we're going to do it in the opposite direction. So this piece right here is 10 by 3 and a half, and we're going to score again on each end on the 10 inch side, so 10 by three and a half. And we're gonna fold and burnish. And then we're going to add that to the book with the glue. All right, so let me see if I can do this. I'm gonna put this off to the side for a minute since it's not really attached. All right, fold that down. Don't go in the score. Go to the edge. There we go. There we go. And we'll open this up. We'll put glue on the bottom and glue on the other half inch tab. And then 
fold that up and glue that down. There we go. All right. So now the outside, these are the um, inner pages that we added and they each have a pocket. One has a pocket here and one has a pocket on the side. Okay. So then um, on the inside here, what we're going to do is we're going to put some flaps and we're going to do the slider closure on that. So the first thing I'm going to need are my pieces. So let's put some things aside for a second and then we will build this up. Okay, so this is, you're going to need a couple things. So we're going to make a gate fold that opens top and bottom. Okay, so we'll put it in the book and it'll open up like that. Um, and we're going to do a slider mechanism closure, which will be really cute. We need to make sure, however, when we put this together that we have an eighth of an inch of space between these two gate folds so that the slider closure works really, really well. So we're gonna cut these the same six and three quarters by five. You're gonna need two of those, but we're gonna score them differently, okay? So I did like a little model here. So you're gonna score one of these at one half an inch and five eighths of an inch, okay? The other one, you're gonna score at three eighths of an inch and one half inch, okay? So again, one of them will be scored at three eighths inch and one half inch, and the other one will be scored at one half inch and five eighths inch. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to give us a gusset and it's also going to give us a half an inch, um, or a half, excuse me, it's gonna give us um, an eighth inch gusset for the actual page itself, but then it's also gonna give us an eighth inch space here. I hope that makes sense. When we fold this, the page is nine inches tall. Let me show you with my ruler. The page is nine inches tall. So when you line this up where it's going to be folded, I'm just trying to make sure that this makes sense. So we're gonna have the same, and the reason why I didn't cut the pieces different was because I was trying to conserve the cardstock. So that's kind of why I was doing that. But you can see that when you lay these down, they're gonna go to nine inches. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Um, but you're gonna have that eighth inch space in between the pages. Now, one of these pages will be four and three eighths. The other one will be four and a half, okay, this way. But honestly, you can't really tell. So that's why I did it that way. So I hope, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please let me, you know, send me a question. Um, watch this again. You can, you can, that's the beauty of video. You can watch it again. But again, you're going to have two pieces for the gatefold. They each are cut the same, six and three quarters by five, but we're going to score them differently. One will be scored at three eighths of an inch and a half, and the other one will be scored at half and five eighths. And that will give you exactly what you need. Okay. So once you do that, then what we're going to do is again, we're going to fold and burnish those score lines. And find my bone folder. Okay. That'll give us a nice um, gusset for a page as well. So then, let's get my, where'd my ruler go? I'm always losing things. The other side, Michelle. Sometimes if I take it and put the sharper edge near the score, it does help me get it started. There we go. 
It doesn't matter which one goes top or bottom. There's only going to be an eighth inch of a difference. And honestly, I don't think anybody really is going to notice unless you tell them. So I won't tell if you won't tell. How's that? All right. Okay. So these will go in our book. So again, this is on the back of um, page E, this inside one on the left side. We just put the horizontal pocket on it. And we're going to take our glue and we're going to glue these to the top and the bottom. All right, right to the score line. And get it right at the bottom and make sure that you don't glue the eighth inch gusset down. There we go. Okay. No, oh, I should have mitered the corners. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. I should have mitered the corners. So let's miter this one. How's that? Let's make it look like we're supposed to do it. Do the glue. Okay. And then we're going to glue that right to the edge, to the top. Turn this a little bit. So now you have your, your um, gatefold piece. When you do the gussets, you're going to have about an eighth inch piece right there that will help everything stay put and give you some room underneath to put things. Okay, so now let's do the slider closure. So this is kind of a fun little closure. So you're going to need a couple different things. You're going to need the mechanism. It's going to be two and five eighths by three and a quarter. You'll need two of those. And on the two and five eighths inch side, we're going to score it half an inch. And then you're going to need two pieces that are three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And the reason why I chose this is because it will fit a journaling card. And I have a journaling card in mind for this. Um, so I'm going to use that. But you could put that perfectly right on top of here. And so there you have it. So you'll need two of those three and a quarter by four and a quarter, and then you need two of the mechanism pieces that are two and five eighths by three and a quarter. And then, so we're gonna take the mechanism piece and we're gonna fold it. All right, just like that. Okay. We're gonna take the back of one of these and we're gonna take our mechanism and let me double check something. Okay. I'm going to put the glue down on this half inch tab. And then I'm going to fold it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line the cut edge to the top of the card. And then I'm going to glue that down so that the score is in the middle of the card. Okay, just like that. Let me, a little bit hanging off the edge. I don't want that. And then we're going to take the other one. We're going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. Right to the edge. Okay. Like that. Okay. So you should have a piece that looks like that. And then what we're going to do is to these folded pieces, we're going to put some glue and then we're going to glue the other piece onto this.
try to keep the glue where it's supposed to be. <laughs> and line that up and glue that down. Okay. Okay. So now what you should have is a piece that will be looking like that. All right, so how this works is that when you grab your book, these pieces right here will slip into the closure. I can get my fingers to work. And that's what will keep this thing closed. So it just slides in that groove there and in that groove there, and then when you put it over there, like that, that will keep it closed, okay? You can either slide it out to open it, or you can just simply lift it, and then when you go to close it, you can just pop it in there, and then that'll keep it nice and closed. And then once you get your um, pattern papers on here and everything, it's gonna be super sturdy. So, um, that's your slider closure. I keep hitting the deal my camera's on. Sorry about that. So, there you go. There's your slider closure. So, that's on the back of E. Okay? Then, let's see. We need to do the back of this guy. So, what we need to do with this is... Hold on just a second, let me ground my gear. We're gonna do a gatefold with a tag closure. So this is the last thing we're gonna do. So we're gonna grab a couple pieces here. We're gonna grab the gatefold. You guys have probably seen me do this too. Um, so we're gonna need two pieces that are nine by three and seven eighths, and you're gonna score at a half an inch. You're gonna need two of these. So we're just gonna fold and burnish these. All right, and again, they're nine by three and seven eighths. And you're gonna score at a half an inch. We're gonna fold and burnish, and then we're going to take our scissors where we hid them and miter our corners. And then we're going to grab our book and we're going to glue them on. So these are just going to glue like so on each side. Finish that a little bit more. Okay. So put our glue. side just like that okay all right second one is going to go on the other side burnish that again Right up against the score, but not in it. Okay, so we have the gatefold. So now what we're gonna do is create the closure for it. 
And this is that tag closure that I like to do that um, kind of came up with. So you're going to need a piece of paper that's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And we're going to score it on two sides at three eighths inch and one half inch. Do that on both sides. So four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Score it at three eighths inch by one half inch on each end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold and burnish just like we did with everything else. And um, this is built for using your journaling cards. You don't have to use journaling cards if you don't want to. You could cover it with pattern paper and use stickers or the ephemera. Um, but sometimes in kits you get a lot of journaling cards so I just thought this is a really cool way of, of trying to use them. I do the eighth inch gussets because it makes it easier for the tags to go in and out. Okay so we got it all folded like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this like that. Yep. I'm going to cut it right down the middle. Okay just like this. So right through the scores. I'm going to cut it right through the middle. So let me do that real quick. So this is four and a quarter, so you're going to want to cut it at two and an eight. So you'll end up having two pieces that are two and an eighth by two and an eighth. Okay. Um, and then we'll grab our book and we're going to glue this onto our book. So we're going to start here. We're going to want to center this. And let's look at this for a second. So we're gonna get our centering ruler and kind of look at this. So let's do this. And when I go here, the first one is the hardest one, that's for sure. Cause you gotta get it lined up just right. But then after that, you um, will have the dimensions you need. So when you do this, you're going to want your little three eighths inch tab to line up at, if you center it, at one and five eighths, okay? So I'm talking about this little tab here, all right? Um, go ahead and miter your corner a little bit. And then we're gonna get our glue. We're gonna glue on that three eighths inch tab and then we're gonna line this up again. And then at the at the two or one and five eighths inch mark, we're gonna lay this guy down, and you're gonna lay it down right to the edge of that page. Okay, so right at the edge of that gatefold page. And again, um, if you wanted to, you could put um, full-size pattern papers here and then put this over it. I am going to patchwork this to kind of mimic the other patchwork um, thing that I'm going to do. Okay. So then fold that gusset just like that so that it's folded down. And then you have your other eighth-inch gusset here, and then you have your tab back here. Put the glue on the tab. Make sure that's folded down and that your other gusset is up and then glue that down. Just like that. And then when you push your gusset up, then it will be centered perfectly and you will have a nice little gusset for your tag to slip in. Makes it a lot easier to get the tag in and out. Um, and once you get the pattern paper on your tag, then um, it's gonna be a little more bulky so the gusset really does help, um, you know, with that. So here we go. All right. So second one, you're just going to line this up to the first tag. Okay. So I'm going to just make sure that everything matches. I'll put my glue on there. I'm going to fold that down just so I get that right. And I'm going to actually turn this so I can see it better. Use my hair. All right. So I put the glue on there. I matched it up. And then 
I'm going to stick that down. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold that gusset down. I'm going to put glue on this tab here. Make sure that gusset is folded so you, it's on the top. So we keep that gusset. And then I'm going to stick that guy down. Okay. So when we push our gussets up, we have a really cute little pocket there. And then the tag for the closure is going to be three by six. And I just used my tag punch and made a little tag shape. And this little guy will slide right in here. And that's what's going to keep it closed. Now, remember what I said, when you get the pattern papers on here and you get your pattern paper on your tag, it's going to fit in there real nice and it's going to stay put. Okay. So that's that. So we have our book. Um, Let's fold it the right way. So the other thing now that we're going to do, all the pieces are on there now. We just have to, I just have to put the pattern paper on and stuff like that. Um, but this is how you make the book. It's um, pretty easy, and but it has a lot of interaction and it has a lot of um, fun elements. So the last thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna put magnets on here that will help close it and and then um, we'll go through and I'll show you what we have made today. And then all that's left to do is cover it with pattern paper and um, enjoy it. So I'm going to put a magnet on each corner here. So it uses a total of three magnets for this book. And then we're going to use a um, ribbon throughout. So. All right, so those are stuck down. I'll take the tapes off of that. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold this up and you're gonna match the corners. And sometimes this is a little easier said than done, but um, you're gonna match the edges like that. And like that. And that will also help keep this closed. There we go. So now you have your magnets. Now, my vision here, since it's flat, this is going to be right up against it. Um, my vision for this is these are going to be photo map pages. These are going to be a nice big place to put a couple, um, you know, really awesome uh, pictures for your album right here. So when you open this up, the first thing you're gonna see are two beautiful pictures for whatever um, theme you're using for your album, okay? So let's start from the beginning. This is gonna be the outside of the book and our spine, our back side of the book. And then this is the, um, you know, opening of our book. Um, I'm going to put seam binding and have an, a ribbon closure on this as well because I think it's gonna look really, really pretty. And so then you open your book and my vision is that we're going to have a nice couple of spots for a really nice photo layout. Um, I think that's gonna look really awesome. So then we're going to open the page up. We'll start on this side first. So it will open up and you'll have a nice belly band feature here. We're, I'm gonna put a stopper here. Then we're gonna have a pocket here to put lots of goodies. Then this will open up. We'll have our slider closure with a gatefold element and you can have a lovely layout um, there. You could also put, um, if you wanted to use scraps, put another pocket in there. You could put all kinds of stuff in there. So you can have that. And again, this will either slide or you can just tuck it in there um, to close it. So however you wanted to do that. This is going to be um, a fold out page. So you have 
eight opportunities for huge pictures. And then this will be our pop-up book element that will also open up. Okay. Then we'll close that up. This is the other magnet that's in the book. So then we'll close this back up and then we'll go to the other side and it opens up like this. And again, you'll have another belly band with a stopper here. You're gonna have a full size pocket here to put whatever you want in. We're gonna open this up. Now on here, we're gonna have our pop and twist element. So that'll be a really fun feature. And that will be held together with some seam binding. I'm gonna do a seam binding closure on this. And then we're gonna have our gate fold over here with my tag closure. And then that will open up like this. And I'm thinking maybe doing some sort of a pocket in here, but I haven't decided yet. Um, there are scraps left over from the cutting guide that you could add all kinds of different little things um, if you wanted to. So um, really the, the choices, the you know opportunities are endless on this. All right, so that is my Home Again Folio, my first design team project using this package. And I love it, and that's how you make it. And I'm going to uh, get it all ready for you to see exactly what it looks like when it's done. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know. And um, I'll see you again real soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.